we want to write an equation for the rational function from the graph of the rational function. To do this, we'll write the rational function in factored form, or the form given here below, where a is a constant, and then we'll have factors in the numerator and denominator based upon the graph. We want to start by determining the key components of a rational function. For example, looking at the intercepts, notice how we have an x-intercept here of positive two. This would be the point two, zero. Notice how the graph does not cross the x-axis here. It just touches and then bounces back, which will affect the equation of our function. And also notice we have a y-intercept of negative one, so the function contains the point zero, negative one. Now let's look at the vertical asymptotes. Notice we have a vertical asymptote here at x equals negative two. And another one here at x equals four. Now we have enough information to determine our rational function, but we do have to remember that knowing that we have vertical asymptotes at x equals negative two and x equals positive four gives us information about factors in the denominator of a rational function. And knowing we have an x-intercept here at two gives us, inform gives us information about the factors in the numerator of a rational function. And to determine the value of a, or this constant here, we can use the y-intercept at this point here. So let's begin to set this up over here on the right. We're gonna have f of x equals, we'll find a in the second step, so we'll have a times a rational function. And now let's start with our vertical asymptotes. If we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative two and positive four, remember these are the zeros of the denominator or the values of x that make the denominator equal to zero. So if x equals negative two is a zero of the denominator, we must have a factor of x plus two in the denominator. And if x equals four is a zero of the denominator, we must have a factor of x minus four. Now let's talk about the intercept at x equals two. If our function contains the point two, zero, then f of two must equal to zero, or two is a zero of the function. A rational function is equal to zero when the numerator is equal to zero. So if we have a zero of two, our numerator must contain a factor of x minus two. But there's more to it than just this. Notice how the graph does not cross the x-axis at two, it touches at two and then bounces back. Just like in a polynomial function, this means a zero has an even multiplicity, so in the simplest case, this would be a double zero, which means we need two factors of x minus two, so we'll square this. Again, because of the behavior of our function, meaning it touches and then bounces back, we know we have to have an even number of factors of x minus two, so we'll select the simplest case when we have two factors of x minus two. And now the last step is to find the value of a, and we can find the value of a using our y-intercept here, Again, if the function contains the point zero, negative one, then f of zero equals negative one. So now we'll find this function value, set it equal to negative one, and then solve for a. So f of zero would be a times, again, if x is zero, this would be negative two squared. The denominator is going to be positive two times negative four, and this must equal negative one. So we'll have positive four over negative eight, that's negative one half, so we have negative one half a equals negative one. Multiply both sides by negative two. Negative two times negative one half would be one, so this is a equals positive two. So now that we know the value of a, we have our function. If a is equal to two, we'll have two times the quantity x minus two squared divided by the quantity x plus two times the quantity x minus four. This would be our rational function. I hope you found this helpful.